Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial on finding and removing duplicate photos in Lightroom. If you've been working with Lightroom for a while, you'll probably have encountered an issue with having duplicate images. Some people might have a few duplicate images and some people have thousands. In fact, I've seen some Lightroom collections that have tens of thousands of potentially duplicate images. The question then becomes, how can you possibly identify and remove those duplicates? Well, the answer is not necessarily to be found in Lightroom itself because there is no tool in Lightroom that allows you to find duplicate images. You can certainly delete images, but finding them is not a feature of Lightroom. So to get help, you'll need to go somewhere else. Now there's a plugin that has been created and this is it here. I'll give you a link to this site in the video. And this is a site that has a plugin that is free for both Windows and Mac. And I've installed the plugin on the Mac on Lightroom 5 and on Windows Lightroom 5 and run it on both. And it's been successful. I'm really happy with how this works. There is a for fee version of a plugin available on the web that is perhaps the most popular one that you'll find when you actually go searching for Lightroom plugins. But this one is free and I really like it and I think that you will not be disappointed in it. So what you need to do is to come to this website and either download the Windows or Mac version depending on what you're working with. Now when I went to install the Mac version, I got a security warning, so I had to hold the command key down as I clicked on the installer to be able to install it. But it installs really well. It installs into the correct folder on the Mac and on the Windows machine. So it's really neat, this plugin. So once you've downloaded and installed the application, you'll need to close Lightroom and relaunch it if you've had it open during the install process. So I've already done that. And we're going to find our plugin by choosing File and then Plug in Manager. So I'm just going to click this to open it. And you'll find the plugin is added at the very bottom of the plugin list. So you can just click on it. And by default, it will be already enabled. So you won't really need to do anything except click Done. So now we're ready to go ahead and actually run the plugin. And we're going to first of all select the folder or folders that we're going to run the plugin on. Now I've created a Lightroom catalog just with these images of which there are a number of duplicates just to show you how it all works. So I'm going to select all photographs and that will ensure that this is run on all the photographs in this particular catalog. But you may want to run it on individual folders in which case you could open your folders group and go and select the folder that you're going to run it on. I've only actually got one folder. So I'm going to go to the catalog and select all photographs. And to run the plugin, I'm going to choose library and then plugin extras and we'll go and select find duplicates. Now there are a few things to be aware of here and it certainly pays to go to the website and read the help information. So let's just bring the website back up again. Here it is here and you'll go to documentation and in the documentation area you can read all about the summary tab on the application, the marks tab, the rules tab and the about tab. But I'm going to go briefly through the things that you're going to expect to see here. So the summary tab just indicates that you could go ahead and click and find duplicates, but it's best actually to go through these tabs and just make sure that you have your settings correct before you do this. I'm going to click on rules here and the rules are what is this plugin going to do to identify a duplicate image? So what actually will tell it that you've got a duplicate image. Well, two images that are shot with the exact same camera, the exact same lens, ISO rating, shutter speed, aperture and capture date are possibly going to be identical images. The problem is that Lightroom only captures the time of capture down to the second. I think it's the second. And so if you're shooting in burst shooting mode, you may have a series of images which all are different images, but all have the exact same camera settings and capture date. In that case, you may want to select file name and file type as being identifiers of a duplicate image because that would weed out images that although 
notionally they were captured at the same time, in actual fact weren't captured at the same time, it's just that the detail of exactly when they were captured is not stored inside Lightroom. So that would potentially avoid images that are part of a burst shooting mode sequence being identified as duplicates when they're not. Now you can also choose to ignore virtual copies and you can ignore keywords. Now that's really handy because once you've run this application a few times, if you're really cleaning up a lot of images, you may want to say, look, there are a few images here that I know you're going to call duplicates, but I don't want you to keep identifying them as duplicates because they're just clogging up the system. In which case you could keyword those images with something like ignore and then you could click here, ignore keywords and say which keyword you want to ignore and that will identify those images and avoid bringing them up as potential duplicates. Now if you choose file name and file type, you're going to get less matches. In fact, if I choose those, I'm going to get no duplicates reported in this at all. So I'm just going to show you that in a minute. Now marks is how the program deals with possible duplicates. Now the other plugin that's available on the market, the for fee plugin, actually doesn't even go and do as much as this one does. What this one does is it's going to add the keyword duplicate to every image that it thinks is part of a duplicate pair or sequence because there may be more than two copies of a particular image. So it's going to mark them with the keyword duplicate. It's going to create a collection called duplicate and it's going to put all those images in that collection. Having done that, it also can mark the images that it thinks you would want to delete for you. And what you do is you tell it how to identify the one you want to keep because there really are as many rules for this as there are photographers out there. But you may want to keep raw files over JPEGs, for example, or prefer DNG files over JPEGs or prefer larger files or files with higher dimensions or higher rated files. So you can check here the checkboxes that would help you identify which are the duplicates that you want to delete. And then you can also use this numbering system to set your preferences. So if you want to select higher rated files in all instances, then you would make this one. And then you would make this raw files perhaps two and then this three and then this four, and this one five. So what the plugin will then do is it will look at these checked options as a way of identifying which is the duplicate to keep and which ones it can get rid of or mark for getting rid of, and it will look at them in this particular order. So you can set not only the preferences, but also the order in which they're applied to the images. Now this is one to take a lot of care with, this abuse color labels for sorting. This will if you select it, wipe out your color label. So you, if you use color labels a lot, you don't want to be selecting this at all. But if you never use color labels, then you could use this and that will add color labels to your images. I'm not going to do that because I think that's a bit risky for most people. Here's the smart collection. We're going to set it to create and use a smart collection. We can type the name in here of the smart collection. I'm just leaving this to the default. If I select clean up before start, it means that if there is a smart collection called duplicates, it's A, going to empty that and it's going to reset the rejected flag on those images and it's also going to remove the duplicates keyword from them, which is what it adds to an image to identify it as a potential duplicate. So the word of warning here is if you use color labels, avoid selecting abuse color labels. So I'm going to click to find duplicates and let's see what happens here. Well, no duplicates were found, although there clearly are some images here that probably are duplicates. So let's go back to the plugin and let's click on rules and let's remove these two checkboxes, file name and file type, because what that's expecting is that the file name and the file type are identifiers of duplicate images. And by unchecking these, we're going to cast a wider net when we're looking for duplicates. So I'm just going to click Find Duplicates. Okay, now we've found 15 duplicates. So let's click OK and let's go to the collections because here is our collection called Duplicates. 
There's a word of warning before we proceed here. The plugin that we have installed is only locating potential duplicates. It's not actually removing them. But in this next step, you're going to start removing those duplicate images. You need to take care because any photos that you delete from inside Lightroom that you remove from your disk cannot be easily recovered. It's a one-way trip. You delete them and you can't expect reasonably to ever get them back. So I caution you to think about what it is that you're about to do. If you are in any way unsure what you're doing, you have a couple of choices. Either remove the images just from Lightroom and don't choose to remove them from your disk or get professional help. It's up to you to protect your own photo library and what you're about to do is look at images with a view to removing them. If you're not sure what you're doing, then don't do it. So having made that warning, let's go back to Lightroom. Here in this duplicates collection, we have 28 images and they represent 15 potential sets of duplicates. Some of these are sets of three, most of them are sets of two. If you've got a lot of duplicates on your drive, you may have more than three in a set. So what this plugin has done is it's identified these two images as being potentially the same image. And it's also made a decision about which one it thinks I may want to remove and it's flagged it for deletion. And it's done that according to the marks rules that we set. So let's just go to library plugin extras, find duplicates and let's go to marks. These are the rules that the program has used to identify which of these images is marked for deletion. Now it's only marked for deletion. This application, this plugin will never delete the images for you. That's what you're going to do if you think that they're duplicates and if you want to get rid of the duplicate image. You'll want to keep one at least. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to agree with the plugin on this. Here's another pair. Now, if I think the plugins got things the wrong way around, for example, then I can unflag this. And I can do that by clicking on the image and removing the rejected flag from it. And if I think this one needs to be rejected, then I can click on the rejected flag to mark it for rejection. And then I would go through all these images to determine, first of all, are they really copies of the same image? And if they're the same image just in two different places or in the same place with different names, then I'm going to select which of the two I want to keep. Now, this is the same image, but you can see that a lot of stuff has been removed from this version. This is the original. So the program has got the flags around the wrong way. If I want to really keep the original, then I want to keep this one. So I want to take the reject flag off this one and I could either keep this one or I could determine to reject it. And I would work through every single one of these image pairs asking myself, first of all, are these duplicates? And if they are duplicates, which is the one that I want to remove if I want to remove any at all? If you've got thousands of images, then this may take you some time to do. Once you've determined what you want to remove because they've got the rejected flag on them, you can easily delete them. Now, typically when you go to delete images that have the rejected flag set on them, you'll choose photo and then delete rejected photos. Well, it doesn't work here because this is a smart collection and you can't delete images from a smart collection. So you'd need to find a different way of doing that. To do this, we're going back to our all photographs. So I'm going to reselect the folder that I chose in the first place when I ran through these images looking for duplicates. And I'm going to choose here, Photo, Delete Rejected Photos. And I'm given a dialogue here and this is where you need to be really, really careful and think about what it is that you're doing. If I choose remove, the images are going to be removed from the Lightroom catalog, but they're still going to remain on disk. If I choose delete from disk, then not only are the images going to be removed from the Lightroom catalog, but they're also going to be permanently deleted from the disk. If these really aren't duplicates, if I haven't made good choices here, then I'm going to lose those images. If you're not 100% sure what you're doing here, 
At the very least, just choose Remove to get them out of Lightroom, but that will still protect you because they're still going to be on disk. I'm going to choose the Remove option. The images that I identified as being duplicates that I wanted to remove have now been removed from the Lightroom catalogue. What's left of those potentially duplicate image pairs is the images that I chose to keep. If you've got a lot of duplicate photos in Lightroom, I think that you'll find this application will get you a long way towards cleaning up those duplicate images. Just be very careful that you understand what you're doing. If you don't understand it, then get some professional help to assist you. After all, these are your original photos and they're not the sort of thing that you can just go buy at the store like you can buy another copy of Lightroom. You really need to take responsibility and be very, very careful with what you're doing with your own photos. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.